Hello, welcome to Notice Book Club. You are watching live on Notice YouTube page or on Geek and Sundry's Twitch, which is pretty cool. Give them a sub and a follow if you haven't. Hey, what's up? My name is Maud Garrett. Joining me as always are these pretty faces that you get to see every week. We've got Rachel Hine and Hector Navarro. And we're doing some different drinks this week. Well, Rachel, you're sticking with your red wine, but Hector's got the beer. It's beer time. It's beer o'clock. Beer o'clock. It is beer o'clock. <laughs> and I have a the <laughs> mango for those asking. No one did. Thank you so much for joining us every single week. We really do appreciate it. This is an amazing book club with such a great community. And I love seeing you in the chat every week. And I love seeing you at the after show every single week with brilliant questions for us, with great discussions. And I really love that we can have these open discussions. Uh, We're going to be breaking down new and iconic genre books. And we have been covering Lovecraft Country for the past two weeks. But because we've got so much to say about it, and the show is airing concurrently as well, we, all, we almost want to read a chapter of the book and then talk about the episode that came out and chat about the changes that were made and how they were different. So because there's a lot to talk about, we are extending the fact that we'll be covering Lovecraft Country through September. We were sitting on an off week, like usually start at the start of the month and then finish at the end of the month, but June was so big. So we're gonna make this one so big so we can even it out. And then October will be coming and that'll be nice and spooky as always. Um, let's hit up that, we got any, no, cool. Last week, uh, you may have noticed we had Angelique Roche on. She was fantastic. She was a bank of knowledge, which we were blessed enough to hear about. Um, but because she had so many amazing facts and I just sat there with starry eyes, um, we didn't actually get to touch on Abdullah's or Abdullah's book and uh, Hippolyta or Hippolyta disturbs the universe. And we really wanted to spend time and give that the credit where credit's due because we will be catching the episode of that soon. So we're going to cover um, a little bit of Abdullah's book again and then get into uh, Hippolyta Disturbs the Universe. Check in with you guys. How are you feeling about it? Are you liking the fact that we can slow our roll and actually kind of stew and masticate on the words each week? Mm. Good word, good word, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, last week was fantastic. I didn't have a chance to join you guys in the after show. So how was that with Angelique? That must've been really sure. cool. Really great, yeah. I, I, I also, I had the, uh, Heart, heart eye emojis and afterwards. Like, <laughs> I have the biggest crush on Angela. Like she's so smart and cool. <laughs> yeah. I well, think I mean, I, I come every week. <laughs> as, also, as I've been ob obviously very obvious and open about as an Aussie, I'm learning about this portion of American history for the first time. Sure. So getting that like super digestible and palatable and real take on this history was so fantastic. I mean, it's obviously a very uncomfortable thing and it's a, the stain of America's history, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's so important to know so that you can understand today's world. Yes. And uh, I mean, it's all just kind of, I don't want to say it's ideal or perfect timing, but it feels to me like this show, like HBO's Watchmen, like, a couple years ago, the movie Black Panther, so many different things in popular culture are looking at what has been happening in the past couple of years and they're not shying away from, from like you said, Maude, talking about the stain of American history. And it feels really good if you're a fan of pop culture, it feels like this is meaningful and this is important and this is, it's not just escapism, it, it's, it's both. It's escapism and it's talking about real issues and it's very easy to relate them to what's happening today. Whereas I'm sure that the generation that grew up watching Star Wars, especially the young people in the 70s and 80s, maybe they weren't making the connections to Vietnam that like are in those original movies. But as we are in a very sophisticated and interconnected world with the internet, like a, an episode of a show can come out, not just a movie, an episode can come out and immediately there's think pieces and immediately there's people discussing it and breaking it down. Angelique is one of those people. And it would be cool, like ideally in a perfect world, we would almost be reading whatever chapter correlated to like the episode of Lovecraft Country that was happening each week. And then we could reconvene and be like, let's talk about the episode, let's talk about the chapter. We're a little ahead but it is really cool that we're kind of spacing it out and almost in a way kind of catching 
like in a way sort of slowing down for the show to catch up to us. Like we're kind of yeah, like, you know, you know what? This is pretty cool. We should slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking too, because I know, um, and we'll talk about the show as well, but um, you know, the next, we're kind of, from what I saw of the teasers for ne this upcoming episode, uh, it's Abdullah's book and kind of teasing a little bit of Hippolyta uh, Disturbs the Universe, I think. And so much gets changed while still maintaining the spirit of the book that, yeah, I feel like us being on that same pace is gonna be really interesting and, um, and tie into the discussion as mm -hmm. well. Um, also just wanna shout out after last week's episode, um, Ty Gooden, who's a contributing editor and amazing writer for Nerdist, um, wrote a really great piece on redlining that you should read on Nerdist, and also a piece um, about experimentations on Black people um, on Nerdist that is in the show, but not the book so far. So mm. just cannot recommend enough. Every Monday, I just read everything that, um, that Ty writes for us, so yeah. yeah. I love that those accessible as well. And I also like that, I mean, there's a, almost like a history in ignoring the uncomfortable past, where it's yes. like, if we just never talk about it again, if we don't bring it up, if it's just something that we ignore and move on from, then it doesn't need to exist and we can all go on. But as we know, being hopeful, you know, hopefully adults here, if you talk it through, if you actually are able to communicate through it, share your experiences, uh, experiences, grieve, but share and like teach and learn, like that discussion is actually a part of healing and it's a really great thing to do. And, you know, when you ignore it, then other people don't get to know about it. And it's like, this is kind of something that everyone should know about. Doing a little social check-in though, there's a lot of people chatting. Hi chat, J Bunt T Rock says, I would love just a whole book of that museum heist crew and their misadventures. I got yeah. very expendable vibes from that, which we will have a <laughs> chat about. Um, Brian VS says, I didn't get a chance to watch the third episode, but I'm all right with uh, it if it gets spoiled accidentally. There will be a bit of chat about that, but we'll, Brian, we will give you the heads up on it all. Um, but if you've already read the chapter, then it won't be too spoilery. Uh, reading Dodo Kiwi says, love how this book shows the history in a digestible way. So not too off-putting and too heavy. A history lesson through a fantasy slash horror lens, which I really love. And he followed up there saying, Nerdist has been so great at supplemental pieces. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I noticed that too. There'll be there will be like a dropping of like a real bit of American history, and you'll read it and you'll go, "What? Jesus Christ!" And then the story just keeps going. It's just kind of like, "Yeah, that happened." Anyway, now our characters are going to be dealing with it, kind of, and then some other supernatural stuff. So, um, yeah, it's uh, and I th I know the show has been doing that too, and there's been some differences, kind of like we mentioned, but um, I noticed that as well. I think it's a I think it's a very it almost feels like Matt Ruff in his research was like coming across horrific things about US history and racism in the US and just being like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. How can I connect that to a Lovecraft like theme? And then I'll just build a chapter around that so that each one really does have like a real meaningful yes. real world thing um, to keep that, 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 uh, that, that balance going of like, what's scarier, Lovecraft monsters or racist white people in the United States yeah. in the South? Like, and you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, and I, I think it's such a, you know, it's a, for me, it feels like a fun little fuck you to Lovecraft because like create created, you know, a subgenre, and we are grateful for that um, because of what it inspired. But the shit that he wrote is messed up and mm -hmm. had some really, really dark, dire thoughts uh, and wrote about them. And, and, you know, and so the fact that not only does Matt Ruff center the narrative and make the protagonists black, but he's using this horrible history around when Lovecraft was living right. to to show the horrors of that and show how they tie into 
horror and science fiction and some of these really scary things like even just not just redlining but yeah the experimentation or um you know in hippolyta disturbs the universe there's some really messed up stuff that goes down and it's it it's a group of people who were not valued by mm -hmm. anyone um mm -hmm. the uh, Hiram Winthrop's uh, employees and we all know in genre don't rule out underdogs man it's all about the underdogs and I that's one of the many things I love about genre fiction and also that you do get history or um, psychology or you know character development interpersonal relationships um, allegories, all of that stuff. Like that's, I mean, that's why I have the job. <laughs> that's why we all do. <laughs> I love talking <laughs> about that stuff. So yeah, uh, I've got a couple of things. Like another thing about um, H. G. Wells, um, and also like the Lovecraft, um, H. P. Lovecraft is probably where I'm supposed to start with that one. The fact that uh, a lot of people idolized this author because his work was so great, but what Lovecraft Country has done is your idol, your hero is also your a villain or someone else's villain. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want to break down that, a lot of abusers or people in positions of power who are seemingly like they're big in the community they are massive donators they are doing great things on the surface because they're doing very bad things behind the scenes mm -hmm. um and it's that balance and it's because of that a lot of people are like but there's such a good part of them and it's like you can be both and that this is a really good like yeah that's part of the whole <laughs> psychology of abusers is like they keep people around so that they don't do that to in order to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, another thing that I want to say is that everyone is, has obviously read quite a bit ahead because we are putting the brakes on somewhat. Miss Necromancer saying, um, oh wait, uh, it was Antonio saying, so I guess I missed the announcement of reading along with the show. I'm so far ahead in the book. And Miss Necromancer <laughs> followed up saying, <laughs> I'm also really far ahead. I might just finish up parentheses Maud is a bad influence <laughs> because I don't know if I can wait to finish it see your hero can be your villain and your villain can be your hero um, <laughs> but it's, I mean, I it's totally fine to, well, to it's, it's an anthology like you know they it's every book is completely different so it's quite hard to spoil it because it's not yeah. like a you know Wow. Yeah, we're all going to be ahead because we are slowing it down a bit. You haven't missed the memo. We talked about it today, just thinking, you know, we keep running out of time. We don't want to short shrift any of the chapters. We might mm -hmm. have more guests on. So mm -hmm. um, we just want to make sure that um, we're really digging this book and, and enjoying comparing it to the show as well. Oh, yeah. um, I just love that everyone's turned to the, you know, the dark side. The dark side. So yeah. bad when I finish the mod side. I will spoil it. The mod side. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, mod. Great comment from M the Cartographer, and I've been thinking about this a lot. I would love for Lovecraft Country to become an ongoing anthology book series. Seems mm -hmm. like a great vehicle to bring in a lot of awesome writers, and it's uh, not too spooky for me, LOL. I've been thinking about this, and I and I don't know if the show is like HBO's Watchmen. I don't want it to get a second series. I don't know how I feel about Lovecraft, the TV show. I'm like, I don't know if I want there to be a second series or a, a, an anthology series. What's really, what's really interesting about this is that Jordan Peele uh, is also the showrunner and the brains and you know action behind Twilight Zone, which is an anthology series. Yes, so yes. he's very successful at doing those. Like he's, it's his jam, mm -hmm. uh, especially now that Twilight Zone is all about the not so subliminal messaging throughout. Mm -hmm. Like he's hammering those points down, yeah. and Lovecraft is doing a really good job of that as well. Um, so much so that they are v very similar vibes tone when you're mm -hmm. watching it but twilight zone will jump in different sort of eras eras um in timelines uh whereas this wouldn't kind of stick into the nitty-gritty yeah. fitty um I, I had a i had a pitch i was thinking that in the same way that lovecraft country is focusing on hp lovecraft 
What if there was a, another book, maybe by another author, maybe by a, 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 a like a, a group of authors, it's sort of an anthology series, the way Emma Cartographer's talking about, that maybe it was like, here's the uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs country, or here's the Ian Fleming country, or here's it, like whatever other sort of problematic authors <laughs> there have been. Bond? Yeah. Yes, correct, correct. So it's like, what if there was something that that looked at a very influential writer and talked about how their work may have included racism or sexism or homophobia or whatever it may be well, straight and, up rapey vibes <laughs> yeah absolutely and oh a hundred percent are you talking ian fleming oh boy um yes and i just read the first ian fleming bond book so i can attest to that that is true uh but i think that would be cool hg wells <laughs> the chat's now saying uh, orson scott card country lol <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i mean yeah. There's, there's, there's just a lot. I just love the idea that like modern day writers, whether it's Matt Ruff or the writers behind the show have looked at Lovecraft and they're like, let's, let's actually use that to talk about stuff. And I think I, it, it, it could be cool if that was the anthology. So uh, this means a hot on with um, Ender's Game. Ender's Game is everyone's gay and gay people <laughs> get to reclaim child soldiers going it's sort of like there you know you and figuring out space but yeah it's dealing with teenage adolescence and homosexuality being like am i be gay like great. that would be a great way to re-own and reclaim also let, me, Cardinals. let me give you another one let me give you another one a sequel to or set in the same world as john carter of mars but instead of a uh, of a southern a uh, Union uh, soldier that travels to Mars and then learns how not to be racist. Confederate, yeah. sorry, Confederate soldier that travels to another planet and learns not to be racist. Send a Native American person. Like, let's refocus, you know, like, like uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, there's a lot of possibility there. And um, I love all yeah. this. Yeah. 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 It could be love, cool. I would also love to see Lovecraft Country with Misha Green. Um, you know, I don't know that Ryan Murphy does. Any, you know, anywhere is near as good anthologies as some other showrunners out there. Um, so I hesitate to use that. But for example, Haunting of Hill House, having another season, Haunting of Bly Manor, which is, yep. comes out in October. Um, yep. But uh, taking Lovecraft Country and using the Lovecraft, Lovecraftian horrors and you know, marginalized groups, but doing it in a different era or, um, and you could still play with, with race. There's so many possibilities and yeah. obviously it's still super relevant that you could go in different eras, you could have different characters, but I really like um, this very, this horror, the, the vibe of everything. And it's not just Lovecraft, like a lot of it is, great hor like horror like haunted house horror yep and yeah i just or just give misha green every show ever and make it genre and let me watch <laughs> it and also put journey smollett in everything too here's how here's how you solve pop culture today give misha green a disney plus show about finn and have john boyega come back done yeah. solved done also, great nuance also, done also have misha green do the uh canary show with journey oh Smollett. oh hbo max oh yeah so times and she does action and she wants to do give it yeah yep. call it that's, we'll call that's... Me. we don't have much else to contribute just call me <laughs> uh, all right so we've only got 40 minutes left so we're going to fast track through a little bit of abdullah's book now they did a how to pronounce in the book and i've already forgotten it it was abdullah or not abdullah it was abdullah 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 uh, George and Montrose find out that a book, which has been passed down in their family for generations, the Book of Days, is missing. The book is a record of what their great-grandmother, Ada, should have been paid for her slave labour class interest. That's the important part as well. The brothers discover that Caleb has stolen it. He says he'll trade them for a different book that he wants them to steal, the Book of Names. Samuel Braithwaite initially tried to get it from Hiram, um, Hiram, sorry, Winthrop, but was unsuccessful. Caleb believes the Book of Names is hidden in a secret room in the Museum of Natural History. Now, in the most recent episode of the show, Christina hints at the Book of Names being important to learning all of Titus Braithwaite's spells. 
Does that change your view of this section at all? Is the question that Rachel has penned for us. Thank Good question. You. Good question. Just I, I, the fact that we now know that they, at least in the show, that these pages have been split up and we don't even, no one has had access to the other pages and, you know, who now, who knows how long. The fact that now Caleb and or Christina are going to get that book, what sort of, if, if the vision that we've seen so far of the rituals that they've done is just half of it, what crazy, like for me, the first thing I thought was they're gonna wake up some Cthulhu type monster, uh -oh. maybe in the South Pacific. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ma, don't read ahead because I feel like I, I feel, haven't. I be okay. I, re I read up to where we were supposed. To. I actually didn't even finish the last book we were supposed. To I got the memo and Good. I went back. Good. I went back to um, Hippolyta's. Just disturbs the universe because I worry that if we keep speculating on stuff, I'm going to look at your face and I'm going to read your facial expression and you're going to like. No, I'm terrible okay. with this. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So um, no, just help in the in the notes. I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, I liked how, well, first of all, it, it, I think I'm so used to binging stuff or having a TV show come out all the episodes at once because of our Netflix yeah. culture, that the fact that this is happening week to week on HBO, I've forgotten that the next time on, on Lovecraft Country has become just as important as the rest of the episode. So like those few minutes, I'm like, I'm so, I'm paying attention yeah. to all the details and stuff. So to see the visuals of how they're going to uh, show us this heist was Pretty really interesting. What's that? They're not, they're not focusing on the Freemasons at all. It looks like we're just going to stick with our usual crew, our trio. Potentially, potentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, I was like, where's the new characters? I know that they brought in some new characters for that heist, so they what's going to happen? They might still meet a few to get in, but yeah. Right. And, and I, do, I, I appreciate that uh, Leticia fucking Lewis is kind of subbed in for George in the book, because, uh, in the show versus the book, because... Yes. George, RIP in the show. In the show. Um, yeah. I, I can actually see the the board meetings or like the discussions that are happening and Misha is every time when they're like talking about the scene, she could go, oh, Letitia could do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody goes, yeah, that's a good idea. Why not? Yeah. Um, I, I think to the to the question that Rachel posed, which was, does it, does knowing that when the Caleb character, Christina in the show, Caleb slash Christina in the show says that it's, about the spells that you need it to like learn all the spells does it change my view of this section at all i think it does because i think that in the book kind of i need some refreshment from you guys i need i need to have my memory refreshed in the book the book of names is something that was in adam's language of adam and eve and that the bad guys want it because that's what's going to help them understand the ritual to then complete the thing they were trying to do in the first section, but everybody died. Is that right? That's what I was thinking. I was thinking it was some sort of ritual. but I don't think it's expressly okay. said. Probably not. Optional, yeah, that's yeah. the vibe I've been getting from it. The cool. fact that it spells, I mean, I grew up watching bed knobs and broomsticks. They had two halves of a book that they needed and the spell in it is that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I'm very interested too, based on the preview, because I think we talked about this a little bit last time, um, and Angelique uh, told us about just how uh, how common it is for families who had enslaved ancestors to have books like this. Yeah, um, which yeah. Um, but also that we discussed how I mean, it's always a little hard for me with this, but like visualizing what was happening in the book, um, excuse me, in this section was a little cagey. And the vibes I got from the preview were like kind of Indiana Jones, -y, yeah, which is for extremely sure. exciting. Yep. Plus, um, that Simpsons episode where they did like a sort of a Freemasons esque thing with like a hammer. Oh, the, what was that one? Stone Cutters. Yeah, I got that. I got those vibes. Yes, the stone cutters, which eventually morphed into the No Homers Club because of how much they hated Homer Simpson and he was oh, the I chosen one. That. Yeah, the, the the number one of the stone cutters was voiced by Patrick Stewart. That's the first time he was on the show. 
Uh, mm -hmm. he, he voiced the head of that. And I can start singing the song that the Stonecutters sang, but we don't have the rights to that. So I'm going to stop myself. I okay. knew I could count on you, though. <laughs> like, I just knew if I said it, you would be able to finish it. So thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right, let's talk about Abdullah's book with the help of the Prince Hall Freemasons. George and Montrose orchestrate a plan to find the book, but give Caleb a fake. Ooh, they're like, will it work? Ooh, but we need this book if he really wants it. Inside the museum, they find a secret passage that leads to a booby-trapped room with a chest suspended above a large sphere. The body of another failed seeker of the book hangs above them. Super Indiana Jones, you know? Yeah. And I love the yeah. fact that it's like, if you make a mistake, that is your destiny. <laughs> like, that's the repercussion, yeah. Also kind of um, House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe and if you guys remember way back years ago when we read The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury, my yeah. favorite book, um, there's the House of Usher 2 where this, this character who lives is on Mars and is angry because they burn. Yay! Um, someone, a friend of mine still has my copy uh, and I'm very mad about it. Uh, right. He's you know a you know uh, what I, they, you know what I started doing, Rachel, is uh, I'm in front of my comic book collection, and I had a buddy borrow some comic books the other day. This is the first time I've ever done this, and I'm very proud of myself. I, uh, you got, a little, little I got a little slip, and I was like, okay, House of X, uh, Powers of X, this Marvel comic. Your library. My buddy Augustine is borrowing it. Yeah, a little library card right there, a little Dewey Decimal System in the House of Hector. That's what. <laughs> that's how that works. I know for a fact that Rachel is like 50% adoration, 50% hard for that. Like <laughs> 20, 25 years later-ish, I finally have someone who appreciates living library. Thank you. Sure. Um, in House of Usher 2 in Martian Chronicles, um, back on Earth, they burnt, you know, Ray Bradbury, very about uh, warning against of uh, authoritarianism and burning books in Fahrenheit 451 and people started burning books on earth and there were these sort of, it was very thought policey. And this guy on Mars builds an Edgar Allan Poe mansion death trap for the dudes who are coming that are like, this is not in the right parameters or whatever. And every single like trap he basically says, if you had read any of Edgar Allan Poe, you would have known what was coming. So there's like Cask of Amontillado and House of Usher and all of these different ways to like kill someone. And that whole booby trap situation also reminded me of House. That was a very long This way. is like, that's like Ready Player One. If you watch the movie and you can recite it line by line, you can pass the test. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, uh, no, well, if, if every person uh, that wanted a chance to not be poor and live in, in the cyber, uh, burned every, <laughs> every book and movie. It's, it's more so the, like, the, the thought police, not the kids who are like, I want to find an Easter egg. Also, right. um, Marion, who, um, has worked on this show before and is a dear, dear friend, actually texted me this, this week or last week and said, are you guys going to read Ready Player Two in November? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I will. Oh, yeah. My, did you just hit your knee on the desk? What happened? Real bad. <laughs> yeah, my legs are too long to fit yeah. places. So, yeah. tell people problems. To recross my legs and, uh, yeah, two, my fever. What is this guy? <laughs> Sorry. Two weeks long. That's what it is. Um, also, the Tamaranian My legs are going like this under my chair right now. I have so <laughs> much room. I'm so short. I, I have so much room. I can see my foot. <laughs> Past my desk if I was <laughs> um the uh Tamaranian asking the important questions Hector I can't help but notice that none of your action figures are smooching oh that none of them oh, are smooching yeah I think he's got a really great plan I think at least 30% 30% of your action figures need to be just queer can you make Finn and, Finn and Poe smooch and yeah, also do that can you make Ray and Kylo smooch I think I can but uh, Kylo died, so that's going to be hard to do. Ray and Ben? <laughs> no, he died too. <laughs> any Ben action figures because they did him dirty. Mwah, mwah. Guys, I'll read Ready Player Two. Yeah, let us know. 
What's the midnight dawn sun shit from? Oh, the- Twilight. I, I want to do a reading of that. Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to reread the Twilight books. Midnight sun. Thank I you. I read them a million years ago. Same, but it's like I just wanted to. I, the only problem is I'll just giggle. Yay! Let them smooch. Let them <laughs> smooch. That was a message to Disney. Yeah, Mr. Disney. If you're no, watching, Disney. Insert another character just to make sure he's not gay, and then <laughs> you figure out what they can do together, but not really follow through on it. Anyway, hey, um, they can still smooch, but Carrie Russell could still be an action figure somewhere in there. It's fine, but it's fine. Okay, it doesn't mean they can't smooch. Rappel, so. do it. Anyway, <laughs> um, they find a secret button that releases the book. And they try to leave, but Caleb appears and demands for the book, and in exchange mm. of the Book of Days, he gives him a little song extra, a bag filled with the money that was owed to Ada plus interest, which is a total of $300,000 then, which I think we did the maths and it's equi- uh, equivalent to $3 million. So we're asking you chat and I'm asking you two right now, what did you think of this section? And are you excited to see it inter- uh, interpreted for the show? I didn't love this section. I know we talked, we touched yeah. on this briefly last week when Angelique was here. I didn't love this section, but I loved the fact that i learned about the 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 book of labor the book of time that that, that this yeah. family had at the beginning and then at the end when they get the money and montrose the last thing is that he says son of a bitch because he mm-hmm. because it just it completely made me think how are these characters going to react to this i cannot wait to see this and i'm not mad that the very next section is a completely different that like we're not picking up with those characters because i've now become accustomed to what the rhythm of the book is and what the show is this this very like you know um uh uh why am i blanking on the uh, 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 yeah. yeah anthology style thing so i really like spending time with hippolyta and uh but i am looking forward to getting back and seeing like how montrose and in the book george and Letitia and atticus and everybody's going to react to this money so i'm really excited to see how the show is going to interpret it and like we've been saying like Letitia has taken the role that George was taking in the book so I'm excited to see that um yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it and she's thought- such a wild card in the show and George is pretty steady in the book like he, he he'll you know take things on but I I think that brings an interesting dynamic too because Atticus is also pretty measured and yeah and calm and she's just like i'm gonna burn this shit down which i'm so here for like it's just (laughs) oh my god i like started i had like the feeling i got when i watched wonder woman and the amazons ride in and they just look so badass and strong but also beautiful obviously and i was just like i've never seen women action scenes filmed like this and when Letitia is just taking the bat to those cars. I just started crying like, in awe and also just, it's cathartic. You're like, yes, destroy, like- Do something about it, yeah. But they, but they also, it's, it's this wish fulfillment, right? Because even when she does that, she ends up, you know- Arrested, right away. Yeah, arrested and abused in this car and everything, but it's, so many and Angelique was saying this too the sort of pioneer like pioneering is so admirable but it also led to so much pain. like yeah it's just it's such a hard thing but that I'm all sort of wrap my head around but to, to be that brave and know that you probably I mean it, it speaks to individualism versus you know empathy for your fellow people which I think is very relevant now on many levels um but the idea that no everything is not going to be fixed because of a thing that you're doing and it's not going to be perfect if you say vote yeah. but which everyone should who lives in america please vote um you but it gets, you think about the future of humanity of this country of people um and that that me- might mean that you don't get to see the great, you know, the progress that you would love to see, which is heartbreaking. But yeah, I think she's just such a, an amazing character. And they're also doing a good job showing that 
it doesn't necessarily change things in the macro, but it is changing things in the micro for them. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, Hippolyta or Hippolyta disturbs the universe. Let's get stuck into this. Back at the Winthrop house, uh, Hippolyta discovers a list of observatories in North America with an addendum for the Winthrop Observatory in Wisconsin. Plus mysterious key and some sort of code. We learned that as a child, Hippolyta's father inspired a love of astronomy in her. She even wrote to the discoverer of Planet X and suggested that he name it Pluto. And I love the story behind that and why it was important and the fact that she didn't get, you know, acclaimed for it, that it was another woman in Britain who couldn't possibly have written that note as fast, et cetera, et cetera. On the road for the guide, though, Hippolyta uh, goes to check out Hiram's observatory. And when she reaches the dome observatory, she uses the key and code to turn on a machine and she realizes that the machine leads to a doorway that's actually a portal. And as she walks through it, she's transported to another world. Dark um, meat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this section. I, I, I agree with Julie Manning in the YouTube chat. Julie Manning says, Hippolyta, fave chapter slash story so far. I think it might be for me as well. I was really, really like tuned into this section. I was really enraptured by it. And I, and I loved how, I didn't even make this connection, but I feel like I was thinking about it on a subconscious level. But in the script, Rachel, you talk about how this, this mirrors the real life history depicted in the movie Hidden Figures that people mm -hmm. didn't know about, about how black women were instrumental in getting astronauts to the moon. Uh, and that there have always been uh, black and people of color women that and 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 you know men that have been fans of nerdy stuff and science and exploration and space and the planets and astronomy and i really i loved all that stuff and the whole time i felt like i fe i still felt stressful with young hippolyta trying to get into this like hobby and then she had that one fantastic night where the observatory dudes who i assumed were white guys where like the one guy that was like, hey, the cavalry's here, come on in. And was like, just the one amazing night. That seat at our table. That made me feel like that was very relatable because I feel as though that's a common experience to where somebody who is getting into something, you know, maybe they go to their first Comic Con. Like I, I remember having experiences like this and other people who are nerds or fans of the thing look at this new person and go, hey, come and check this out. There's nothing better than that. It's such a great feeling. And then when she went back, it was like, you're cut off. Like she was like, I didn't get the guy's phone number. I can't tell anybody that I was there that night. And, you know, and people are like, the gates closed. You got to leave. Get out of here. You're not supposed to be here. That also felt relatable too. So the, the entire- relatable part for me was yeah. uh, the next time she went to the observatory and she got tested. Tell me about Jupiter's moons in the <laughs> order that they were discovered. And she's like, true. She's like, Yep, they just discovered one a couple months ago, bitch. And the guy yeah. was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that test. Yeah. And there's yeah, gate. And it, yeah. It's mm -hmm. such, it is the highs of, oh my God, my people, um, which is the best case scenario. And I think, you know, more and more today, we see a lot more of, uh, you know, obviously, as we all know, there are a lot of shitty people on the internet but like generally there are many more communities <laughs> that that do welcome you and i remember on my first day at nerdist i was which was a long time ago now and i was so shy like you guys remember me in 2016 i was still more shy i was like terrified to meet anyone and after my first day i came back and i told my best friend i was like it's so great. I could say the weirdest, nerdiest thing, and it won't even remotely be the weirdest thing that somebody said all day. True. And they were so true. like- Dan Casey was in that office. Was, that that checks out, out. that checks out. Yeah, you know, and, and, but then at other places, you know, I've, I've experienced the gatekeeping. Um, and- I still go, I still get it guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I also just really loved that they focused on astronomy because I'm so fascinated by 
hidden the hidden the real story behind the black women who you know worked on the space program but also yeah. people behind the scenes in history which there are many from many different you know uh marginal women behind men um marginalized groups etc who really had more to do with the success or the you know thinking behind something huge and so the fact that that all ties in but also that she's being Atticus is being lured by sort of this whole science fiction uh story and that is like his element mm -hmm. Letitia is very mystical and reads fortunes and is pulled in by a ghost and Hippolyta Hippolyta is fascinated by astronomy uh, we get a little hint of that in um the uh, witch house chapter where mm -hmm. they you know they they get the whole um planetary orbit um and then she gets to go to another planet through a portal like how i mean it ends up being very scary and messed up as as much in this book is but the fact that she gets to go to another planet and come back and survives. I, so far, it seems like no person, yep. uh, Hiram Winthrop, or uh, definitely none of the Black employees. Yep. Uh, yep. Get to do that. So, actually, that's a really amazing thing because when you, you can even expand that further, Atticus uh, learning about these vampiric sort of monsters in the first episode or in the first portion of this book as well. And he was able to go into the fight or flight mode because he was a soldier. So it's like really indicative of their past and that they have this sort of like experience and uh, enough of like a brain capability to understand process and move forward with it. And what yeah. was really cool is in this part and parts coming up, which I won't spoil, but it's actually really resonating with me where it's like, all right, I'm presented with this information and I have two options. I can freak out yeah. and not handle this and lose it. Or I can accept that this is now my new reality and I can keep a level head with it and I can face it. And these black women, every single time, Letitia with a haunted house, um, upcoming with Ruby, it's like, right, I don't have time to be precious about this. I can't lose it. I have to face it. Yeah. And I really, really like that part of it. Uh, it's really interesting that there's a bit of a split in the chat, uh, chat about this chapter. Um, I apologize, I cannot remember who was saying it, but I agree with you somewhat. Um, and that was, you were listening to it on audio, I'm stalling, Jay Bunch to you rock. I'm listening to the audio book and I had trouble paying attention to this section. I had to rewind a lot. It just didn't keep me as well as the other sections, which Brad Easton said that was the same for me. But Brian VS was like, this part really pulled me in. And Larry yeah. was like, agreed. Um, and the other dis uh, uh, discrepancy in a way is the fact that a lot of the women are under really, really understanding the gatekeeping that's happening. Mm -hmm. But the men aren't. Ah, it's not as obvious to them in, sure. in the same words. So that's really sure. feedback and I like Because it. I think that's I think that's a great thing we can unpack too, because I can see both sides of that exchange where she gets picked up by an astronomer who was like car broke down, right? And this happened in the book. And on the drive up to the observatory, he tests her. And I can see it as like that is completely out of line. There's no need to do that. But I can also see this perspective that I'm, I'm sure maybe a lot of guys see where it's like, well, what's necessarily wrong with that? Like it's, it's, it's something that like you're engaging in the, 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 the valuable thing, the commodity in this world is like the knowledge is and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're like trying to get somebody in on something and stuff like that. I can understand it. So I think it's very interesting that, that some women, yeah. uh, pick, you know, pick that out and that maybe some, some male readers might not necessarily have like noticed that as being super like, Max Bar did yeah. interesting. Was was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think that it's it's also about do we think in this exact scenario that that is how they would behave if they were in the car with a man? Right. Right. Interesting. That's part of the thinking is like if you why is it that you're questioning this person but probably wouldn't question Correct. somebody else? Correct. Like it may have been 
Totally. And it may have been that that astronomer, if he got picked up by a, a male driver, he would have been like, hey, remember that thing a couple months ago? We discovered a new planet, a 12th planet. Isn't that cool? As opposed to like, okay, you say you're an astronomer, huh? And like a fun and cheeky yeah. way. And yeah. it's, But it's, it's very interesting. And to what Maude was talking about, the way that Black women in this story just like get into what they're dealing with and know how to deal with it. The character of Ida like broke my heart in this section. Oh. This character... I did not see her as like an antagonist at all. I did not see her, I, even though she literally, she literally sends Hippolyta back with something to kill Hippolyta. Just, like that's nuts. But, but the way- she's trying to keep this world, like she's trying to keep the world safe. She's trying to keep this young girl safe that she's ran away. literally the gatekeeper, guys. Yeah, yeah I know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. So, how do we get to Ida? Let's just uh, skip through this little bit here. Uh, on this new world, there are multiple electrified gates and cages, which Hippolyta finds out the hard way. When she regains consciousness, she meets Ida, an old employee of Hiram Winthrop's, who tells Hippolyta that they're on another planet. T. Hiram, aka Terra Hiram. Uh, Ida tells her that monsters roam outside their gated community <laughs> and that she and other Winthrop employees were brought there in 1935 after a maid, Pearl, ran off with Hiram's son, Henry. Hiram tried to scare Ida and the others to tell him where his son went. But then he died and left them stranded <laughs> there. Isn't that the worst thing you've ever... I... <laughs> yeah. yeah, full on. Uh, Ida believes that Hiram only meant to leave them there for a few days, but Samuel Braith Braithwaite must have killed Hiram when they're on the planet. Uh, all the others are dead, and you kind of hear the story of how sort of six turned into three, which turned into two, which turned into one. And Ida's been there for the last five years of her life, and she's so content. Alone, yeah. Really interesting yeah. as she well. Doesn't to, she doesn't have to do, like, you know, her life, Especially with Hiram Winthrop, sounds like a, an extra special nightmare. Um, and I also I, I love that the the women, the black women in this story, and need to survive and know that they have to survive no matter what because of how of their inherited trauma, their own trauma, like everything that they have learned is like I have to get through this somehow. Yeah. Um, I mean, and the other thing I love, and they're breaking points. Like I, I found that really fascinating in the yeah. book. Where it's like you have a group of individuals that are stranded there. Some of them are in denial. Other people have hope. Other people lost hope. Um, but I, I do find it interesting in like because it's a personality type or trait of what you do. Um, and it's interesting to see someone just had to get out. They had to explore. They had to. They couldn't be enclosed in this little space. Uh, another one um, just kind of lost it. It had been too long and they flipped. They ate grubs and took a walk in a storm and never came back. One of them died because their health failed them, you know? So it's kind of really interesting to see what you would be like in those strenuous yeah. circumstances, yeah. If that was me, I think I would have been like Tom Hanks in Castaway and, and, at, and at one point, tried to do anything in my power to get the hell off of that planet. I would have freaked out and wanted to get off of that planet. Even if I had a magic machine that gave me food every day, I still would have been yeah. like, look, man. That would have been me. I I got got Mary, Mary was obsessed with like, it's yeah. a random meal every time you cook. <laughs> I would have been four hours on the dot. New meal. What do we got? Yeah. That's my life. That's yeah. it. But I'm, I'm, I am content with my situation depending on the situation anytime i go to the dmv i'm happy to be there hours no problem i can't because i can't do anything about it so i always bring a book and i'm like i'm like there's no reason to make a fuss i'm stuck here and it is what it is but i, I know people that go to the dmv and they get itchy they're like come on when am i gonna yeah, you know yeah i have a book yeah i also think the what's interesting is um is the fact that ida does send like she she wants to connect with uh hippolyta and and i i'm saying hippolyta because only because i think that it's really interesting we were talking about uh accents and language before we went on the air and hippolyta to me is like regional dialect mm -hmm. and so i 
Well, of course, well, I think of that for the Greek goddess of myth, but in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, I went to school in Santa Barbara and everyone said Camino Pescadero, <laughs> you know, because they're all Spanish. <laughs> and that's not right. Um, mm-hmm. So I think there, that I, I like thinking of it as Hippolyta for the character because it does sound like, I have family from the South, it does sound like what those names Hippolata. but either way Hippolata. um but i do i do really like that the stories are framed on these characters for their strengths because it's a very chosen one thing to do where you know think about harry potter think about like all of these situations where the situation matches perfectly something that they know or have or you know in, instinct Um, But we're seeing not just a different version of that. We never see an all black cast of characters that are all have these strengths and chosen one elements to them. Mm -hmm. And by having this anthology series and giving them all different moments to have that, that's like a whole bunch of Luke Skywalker. I just, I just think that's so cool and and powerful um yeah. i can't wait and to also see i did all... a real one for being like i like you i'll show you my telescope but also here's a tentacle monster on your way yeah. out so speaking of that uh ida is showing uh hippolyta the galaxy and two white men the observatory's watchmen show up on the beach and are eaten by the scylla 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 Scylla. I only know this because I just read Circe, which I've recommended to everyone. But Scylla is um, a Greek. It's Greek, right? Scylla. Scylla is the, um, yeah, Scylla and Charybdis. And Charybdis is the tentacled monster and Scylla is the, like, whirlpool in the ocean. Yes. And Terrifying. Circe sometime, which is the best book I've read in a bajillion years. Scylla. It dives into the alternate version of Greek myth. So it seems that Ida has a functional relationship with Scylla at this particular moment. She watches her movements, but it's like a peaceful understanding. Uh, but now that uh, Hippolyta is there, there's a little bit of a disturbance in the force and she tells uh, Hippolyta to leave. She believes that Hiram Spirit lured Hippolyta to the planet to bring her back to Earth so she can mm. find her, he could find Pearl. So the fact that Hiram is dead doesn't necessarily mean that his quest dies with him because she obviously believes in the spirituality and ghosts, etc. And so she's in the, her fear that she would rather be absolutely nowhere with absolutely no one except a tentacle freak monster thing says so much about this white man's power, her former boss. Woo! So when uh, Hippolyta is on her way, Ida gives her a box with the sphere in it and tells her to destroy the key to the observatory, get back on Earth, and then open the box. And of course, straight away when she gets back, um, Hippolyta is harassed by a group of white men. And of course, they steal the box because that's what they do. It's like, oh, that looks valuable. I'll take it and open it. And they poke the sphere. And it turns into this tentacled creature that attacks them. And Hippolyta realizes that Ida meant to kill her so that no one would know about this. And that heartbreaking moment where she was like, oh, sweetie, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. I wasn't going to do that. Yeah. She's like, I will protect you. You couldn't trust me. Like we are, I actually had this moment both times reading this when uh, Ida is so excited about the planet discovery. Oh, I discovered one more because of the notes and one more on my own. I was like, is there a time jump? Is Hippolyta Ida? Oh uh, no, yeah. that's I don't where think my so. mind went. Because when you when yeah. you start portal traveling, you start fucking with time. And it's when true. you fuck with time, you are literally young, meeting your older self. But they yeah, have- yeah. Uh, I, it's I, like I, interstellar. I'm like Hippolyta Ida Ida Hippolyta. Mm. I swear to God, if that happens, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> I haven't read ahead. <laughs> that means the older has to work for higher up. Yeah. I don't yeah. want that. But wait, oh my Interstellar, for my Christopher Pike fans out there, Starlight Crystal is the exact, well, not the exact, but it's ba- the basic plot of Interstellar. And as soon as 
I saw the like at the beginning of the movie the like weird dust stuff. I was like, that's him. He did a loop through space. And the person I was with uh, was like, what the fuck? Um, I was like, what do you mean? And, and I well, they said it after because he was like, okay. And then it ended up being that. It's like how Christopher Pike. Anyway, read uh, Christopher. I also want to just touch on the last thing about this, and we'll talk about the show in the after show, but. Uh, Hippolyta notices that Horace's comic book about female space traveler uh, Orithia Blue is missing from her car. Who do you think stole a comic? I listened to it twice. I still have no idea what the hell that's about. I think it was, I mean, who's the big bad for the whole book? Caleb. I, yeah, I think it was Caleb. Or in the show, Christina. I think yeah. that's the character who was spying on Hippolyta, took the comic book, is going to do something with it, is going to maybe target... Horus, aka Diana in the show. Um, and maybe there's gonna be some kind of clue in there because Hippolyta was freaking out with Horus. Like, Horus, did you sign that? Did you sign that comic book? Nobody can know that I was up there. And Horus was like, Yeah, I signed it HG, whatever he said. And so she so she, that's what she was asking about, just to make sure that there was no trail so that nobody could um track it back down to well, her. So he has yeah. the key. Yeah. So and the code, she has all of these um elements that could lead back to those portals and there are so many other worlds yeah like she's spinning the dot you know the dial trying seeing where to brilliant. go wasn't it it was a thrillion yeah, yeah. brilliant i hope that the end of this book ends with uh them kicking caleb or christina 300 style king leonidas into a oh, portal yeah. And then locking the key and being like, now you're stuck on that planet and you get to have to get eaten by that tentacle monster creature. That's how I hope it ends. Oh, that just reminded me of something that I... The uh, movie 300. No. Yes. No, The Witcher maybe? <laughs> Witcher show? Do they like end up oh. dropping someone somewhere? I, have, I haven't seen it yet. You're going to have to ask Maud. Good. Oh, the after show? What's one? What no. was that for? I'm no. seeing someone get absolutely blocked on the chat. The Witcher, the show The Witcher. Yeah. Doesn't um, Yennefer like grab someone and like teleport and drop them somewhere? She has the ability to teleport, yes. She's, she's, and she dropped like, someone on the beat, something. Yeah, with the baby? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I was like, what am I thinking of that's like, Yennefer's in portal. Like, five. <laughs> Gerald doesn't like portaling, but he doesn't yes. when it's necessary. He's got Roach, the horse. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, call to action. Since we're extending the book into September, you've already read your homework for next week. Yay, count your wins. Jekyll in Hyde Park is what we'll be covering. I loved this chapter with Ruby. If you are mm -hmm. looking for something extra, catch up on the show with us. Uh, also next week, a very special announcement. We're going to be doing a bonus episode of Nerdist Book Club to break down the Dune Dune trailer. <laughs> Join us next Wednesday Dune. at 10 a.m. to watch along and to share your thoughts. You can check out previous episodes of Nerdist Book Club on Nerdist YouTube or the Geek and Sundry Twitch. Make sure you like and subscribe for those. Um, but of course, we did say we wanted to chat about the show. So if you do join us on the after show, which you can get access through Geek Bombs Discord, if you sign up to any of the tiers for uh, Geek Bomb's Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Geek You can get involved in that. It is a vocal voice Q&A that we do. Um, eventually we'll do video. I think that could be kind of cool, but I know that some people are a little shy. Uh, I like to drink and eat brunts. So we're doing- Oh yeah. But we will be talking about the episode that just came out on Sunday. If you've seen it, obviously there will be spoilers, but we do want to chat about uh, Letitia in her haunted house and how it was different from the book and why it was awesome with a Q&A for that one. So guys, you've already done your homework. That's going to be great. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. For two episodes. <laughs>